Oh, see, I was looking at the thing. Yeah. But the thing. Well, this is, is the first too... time you've been early. Yeah. So it's, so, I'm this, sure it's confusing. For this everybody. is information that everyone else has known. Yeah. And it's their private domain. And I respect it, obviously. Um, but now I feel like I'm a part of a secret club. Yeah. And it feels right. Uh, gather Ed Throng. I, I now see you through the foam. Uh, we are gathered here. J3Z, thank you so much. We are gathered here in this sacred hall uh, to celebrate something very special. And that is the next episode of Acquisitions Intoxicated, Twitch's brewing show. Uh, I am your internet friend, Jerriford K. Horkrims. I am joined, as almost always, uh, by Acquisitions Intoxicated Brewmaster and so much more, Eric J. Benson, Edge Benson, the notorious EJB Azerbaijan. Fair enough. Uh, a bouquet. Wow. Uh, of sobriquet, right here, right now. Um, and of course, you can see before you, now obviously those of you who are well familiar with our mystery, you know perfectly well, but those among you who may be newcomers to our sacred realm, uh, you can of course see the implements, the material components, if you will, uh, of the spell that we are going to cast on these grains. And it's going to transform these grains. These grains are going to become something else uh, through direct application um, of our ancient traditions, which of course we all own. Now, um, you know perfectly well uh, that we attempt in every way to adhere to the hero's journey on this program. And that means that there's going to be challenges, there's going to be setbacks, but there's going to be a rich narrative arc, um, and we're all going to go through it. So. Um, you can see right here the crucible. Now, I am missing part of my crucible, if you can run and get it. Hop cages, so vital uh, for, for caging hops. Um, exactly, right? But this is the device, and you will see the entire process take place uh, over the next hour and a half. Uh, Eric has already instructed the device. Um, in the ways that it must prepare them. Mm -hmm. Now, what recipe are we putting in there today? Old Lang Sa Sin? Old Lang Sin. Oh, this, oh, Old Lang Sin. This is the um, breaking. Oh, yeah. Your you're, you're, you're breaking your New Year's resolutions beer. Uh, so, this is obviously what we're looking forward to. Now, uh, what goes into such a beer, Mr. Benson? So, this is going to be predominantly Golden Promise. So, that really switched. Oh. The sweet, sweet pale, pale yeah. malt, but then it's backed up with chocolate malt oh. for a really toasty coffee flavor. So it's so I'm eh, so I'm gonna open this thing up and it's gonna burst. Yeah, and then you're gonna get some caramel from the crystal. Oh, this is lovely, and it's not a and it's not a small bag either. No, this thing is fucking massive. Goodness gracious, man! I think we might have a good one here. Now, let's get a little, little munchy munch. So we got some golden promise, we got some chocolate, some caramel. So satisfying. What a nice thing. That's one of the cool things about it is that you can taste this. Mm -hmm. And you're not you're not gonna be that completely smells like a I wanna eat. It's insane. You can it's have like a little a, pinch. Well, yeah, but it's not gonna have it doesn't little, taste the same. Like as it's it not exactly the same, but we can get a sense, right? Yeah. It tastes real, real good already. And we have not even applied um, our sacred techniques. Now, uh, now that our hop cage is, God, it's still good. It's still being good. And I ate it 10 seconds ago. Yeah. Now, uh, when it comes to the hop, ax you know, axis, of course we got fuggle here mm -hmm. and lots of it. Mm -hmm. um, how much goes in which cage? Uh, 2.5 ounces goes in one cage. Oh, okay. So it's just right up front. Mm -hmm. All right, well, so it's two sacks. That part I can handle. I can handle one plus one, that's good. But let's use the, let's use the instrument for the last bit. Now watch this. You had trouble using this in the past, so I want to make sure that... Oh, yeah, I had trouble. I want to... <laughs> Pressing all of the one button. You've, there were some issues in the past. I know it's been a challenge, and yeah, so... Yeah, it's real tough uh, mechanics there. Here, watch this. It's never been easier. How did you do that so well and so quickly? 
I was taught. I will never know. I mean, man, you are oh, so I'm, fantastic. I'm, I'm about to flip the script because I was taught by the best. But Jow! But Jow! God, they let him get away with anything these <laughs> days. <laughs> All right, now, might have to bite this one. Yep. This is a chomper. It's oh. a chomper. Are you, are you trying to give me a scissor? Wow, he's calling you just a baby. You can't. You can't. <laughs> no, if, if Brenna saw this stream, she would be mad. She would say that teeth are not tools. Because your golden chompers are. Well, yeah, I yeah, because these too. these chompers. This is how I make my money. I don't think that's how <laughs> that works. Big chomps. You can, I chomp, you can I, literally dump the whole fucking thing in. Oh no, the rest of the bags I'm just gonna throw right in. This is this uh, is just for the point five. Okay, you're doing it backwards. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm taking. Come on. Yeah. Baby. Someone's cheating. Baby. All right, four, nine, five. Now we're talking. Hang on. Oh, maybe, maybe you don't know that those two other bags are exactly one ounce. Maybe that's the case. Oh, no, I looked. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Here, you know what, though? Listen, this is... You know? This is easy to... Listen. You didn't even have to do that. You could just pour another bag in. It's easy to find out. Now you're going to have to do fucking math, which we know you can do. No, no, do. zero math. Watch this. Okay, so maybe it's not a full ounce. Uh-huh. Uh, here, watch this. Okay, the, so the, now you're going to have to remember what was in there and oh, that, no. and then this the third is, this one. This is 0.5, it's fine. Each of these individual ones is going to be great. Now watch this. You've never seen, you have never seen it happen like this before. Yeah, I know, because it's dumb. Because it's, because it's the wrong way. <laughs> I don't want to see. <laughs> I don't want to see it done. For God's sake! But I didn't even know it says one ounce on there. How how could I have been steered so wrong by L. D. Carlson Company, hot pellets, alpha acid four point one? What the fuck? See? There's a ton extra in this one. I I'm seeing literally every. There's better. I'm I'm literally seeing everything that can possibly go wrong. Less though. That's kind of. Yeah, weird. that's weird. We don't want that. No. That's kind of shady. Yes. And I'm having fun. You having fun? I'm having a great time over here. I'm I'm just enjoying the fucking show. Yeah. There's plenty. There's Wish there's I had some popcorn. There's plenty to enjoy. That's yeah. gonna be our next thing. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now. Yeah, we're going to start a boutique popcorn business. I'm in. Actually, there's one down in Pike Place that's utterly amamazing. Oh, yeah, dude. They have it's, it's, it's all the shits in the cylinders. Yeah, it's like they make their uh, like this caramel corn popcorn fresh every day. Oh, yeah. And it's unreal. Well, dude, I know that I know that you are not a stranger to caramel corn. There was that you would grab that stuff from the corner store called crack corn. Oh, yeah, that's just amazing. <laughs> I think you got two bags. <laughs> All right, now, so there is our hop. Two and a half ounces, exactly, digitally measured. Um, so now that's ready to go. I mean, I, I feel like that's more hot. I feel like I've never put two and a half ounces of anything in the first cage. Speak for yourself. Yeah, just, yeah listen. <laughs> Sounds like you don't spend a lot of time around cages. All right, now. Because of the wireless instrument, is it goof, goof, goof troop? Yeah. Because of the wireless instrument, mm -hmm. it's never been easier. This is like the D and D Beyond of brewing, basically. I don't think that's the right. Uh... Yeah, maybe not. All right, now, but this is the best part: is that when I go over to see the list, it's got all these other awesome recipes that we've done, like ginger all the way, Chechnomancer. I know, whetstone, sticks shift. Ugh. It's just beast mode. I'm looking for old. I think I have to get a refresh. Maybe you should refresh it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Because it was actually connected this time and it was a treat. <laughs> Good air peak performance. Ac ink the drink. I do not see it. Wow. But it's fine. I can refresh as I can refresh as many times as we want. Uh, this is an incredible opportunity, you know, in my opinion, fuck. to let people know. Is this camera available? No, I'm is gonna it? have to redo it because this. It's all good. I'll just down. sit down here. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll just I'll talk to this camera right here. Watch this. Hey everybody. 
It's uh, Jerry's, Jerry's grain times. Uh, oh, no, what I was going to say is that obviously this is, this is a momentary scenario. And you'll recall, of course, that the Pico Bruzi and indeed the cloud infrastructure that was advertised as part of its basic functions um, after the company went into receivership is no longer available. And so we have to spend time using software that essentially tricks the device into believing that Santa is real. And so it's a, it's a multi-step it's a, it's a multi process of lies. That's why you don't have stuff on the cloud. Well, that we pump, yeah, but, but that's, that's how it is, like having that extra thing out there. And so obviously, nerds have figured all this out. They're not worried about that at all. But this does give me an opportunity while that's going in to just do some housekeeping, let you know sort of what's going on. So today, obviously, at 2.30, I know that you're looking at this and you say, hey, this is a, a medieval sort of a brewery. What's going on here? You will be shocked to learn that by 2.30, you will find this place radically transformed into an arena of battle where wargaming and role playing collide um, in our show, Black Remnant which is very, very good, and you might enjoy it. Uh, set, of course, in the inner sphere, the, the battle tech uh, context that so many uh, have appreciated. Um, we occasionally get cool toys from Catalyst to give away. It's a very, very good show, and you should come and check it out, even if It's an old commercial. It's a really old commercial. That's 80s, late 80s? Yeah, it's a very, very old commercial. Um, but. It's almost 40 years old. Well, some of us are. Now, uh, here's what I would say is that in addition to this. All right, I was like, what are you doing exactly? We're doing fine. We're going to skip, and then we're going to skip. But, Czech Romancer. And we have some whiskeys as well, but Czech Romancer is on tap uh, for us today to examine. I did it. And I did it the first time. There wasn't any vulture-like shrieks um, at any part of the process. No, obviously um, this has been Jerry's Grain Hour, um, and it's been an absolute pleasure. Now I'm gonna, now, I'm, you should change to another one because otherwise this is just gonna be like a 4K picture of my ass as I crawl up and there's gonna be this pale strip of flesh. Oh, I knew I was gonna have zoom. to throw up sometime today. Wait, don't zoom. zoom no, that's the, that's zoom. the opposite of what I'm zoom. looking for. Sup, Skiggity? Well, yeah, more or less. Now. Uh, okay. I want to see every delicate hair. Yeah, Jerry's ass. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Just in time. Jesus Christ! I thought I was going to miss the ass. All right, here now. So if we do have Checkromancer, I mean, what order should we be doing this in? Because I know whiskey that, first. Because I don't want the beer to ruin the whiskey taste of the whiskey. Oh, there. Oh, yeah. Especially since there's going to be like some smoky flavors in the, there's going to be like roasted malts and stuff. It's just going to come in here and fuck all this up. All right, so tell me about, I'm not even familiar with Middleton. Middleton, this is going to be a very delicate uh, whiskey. Lighter. Lighter in body. Flavorful. How did they figure it out? Oh, how to make whiskey? Yeah. I'd like to read about that. Stilling. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, I understand beer and well, stuff like I, that. I'm thinking that. Go back it, even further. How do they figure out how to make mead? I, Who the, what asshole said, let's put some honey in a barrel and maybe see if these I feel like yeast ferments. I feel like some of it had to be accidental. Absolutely. Right? It's like the olives. Like, you try to eat an olive off of a tree. It's like, no, thank you. Mm. But then the olives that fall from that tree into the ocean water, those are edible? Mm. They're like, wait a second. Wait just a fucking second. All right, here. So you're saying delicate. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, I don't. Okay, Ooh. okay. 
All right. And what's the name of this brand again? Middleton. This is Middleton. So we're we're introducing ourselves, right? The mm -hmm. first one is there, and then we're getting crazier. We're getting more sensual. Now, are these waters from the Isle of Skye? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not from a tap. No. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> but there are. Charlie's it's still from there. A tap yeah. In but, the Isle of Skye. Yeah. You know. But there, there are such. I have seen tasting sets for whiskey mm -hmm. that include like little samplers of water from each of the regions. I assume because the peat content affects the groundwater or something. Maybe. I just made it all up. I don't know. I think you just made it all up. No, it is delicate. Like some of the other ones, again, I was just trying to, because I think of it as quite, I feel like the baseline is pretty powerful. Remember, do you, do you... Yes, exactly. Right? Put yeah, a yeah, exactly. Little drip drops. Dry it out. And, well, you, can, and you can do this at home. Know, and, you know what I mean. You can do this at home with any liquid. At home, you can any any liquid you have at home, you can do this with. Get the flavors off of that. Yeah, whatever you want to do. Simple green. Mm -hmm. um, That's what you're getting off of that. Simple green. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that if you think this looks fun, you can do it as much as you want at home with any liquid you have available. I'm gonna do it again. I was working on a bit before. Yeah, Peril. I was talking to Brenna about mead making. Just last week. God, that's so nice. It's really sweet when you do the technique. And also the grain origin of it is really clear, right? Because as itself, it's really powerful shit. Are you ready to try it? You gonna give a toast? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, can you know, give a toast? You, the man of a thousand words? Well, I have a couple. I haven't done it before. Um, Come on, man. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, why shouldn't you? But uh, I, I'm going to have a lot of toasts here. I'll do, I'll do a toast. Here, here, I, I mean, you, you are, you are, I'm sure that you are a toast master. I'm sure that you've done it in the past. I've burnt a lot of toast. Look, yes, I've, I've made toast at home. Here, here, so, so, so show, me the, show me the guardrails. Hook me up with a good toast. Oh, oh, there's classic toasts, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. There's killer classic toasts. Uh, one of the classics, one was, here's to a good life and a merry one. A quick death and an evil one. Or an easy one. Oh, an evil, evil I was one. like, Jesus an Christ! An easy one, sorry. A pretty lassie and an honest one. A fine whiskey and another one. Oh, hey, that's great. Slam Javar. Yeah, see, that kicks ass. Yeah, <laughs> and an evil, evil one, one, an yeah. evil death. Yeah, one of those two. No, this is a, a classic Klingon toast. Here we go. Toast, <laughs> AM toast to toast. Yeah, yeah, that's genuinely sweet and friendly for something that is primarily burning alcohol. Oh, and then when it's done, there's just this honey wash over the whole palate. Mm. That's, that is not, that is not uh, a glass like this. Wow. Something else. Yeah, it gets you very. He's like. Graph of text yeah. about them, and they're doing weird shit. Beasts rising out of the ocean, a chunk of the moon falls down, destroys the ocean. That's
uh, you cannot gainsay this fit. He's got this shit dialed in. Front cover romance novel right here. Anyway, well, yeah, there's, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> a Highland, a Highland kiss. <laughs> Have you ever posed to be painted for the cover of a romance novel? Be honest. <laughs> no, not yet. Nobody would want to see that. I, well, well, I mean, I think we could get a couple buyers um, right here. Oh, you got to stop and restart? Yeah. Drash? Yep, yeah, go for it. All right, here. He's from the U.S., but then he goes back. He's like, he's like in the will. Is it good? Yeah, so he's like in the will, but he's like the 10th person down. And there's this funny montage at the beginning of, of nine off. other people dying in like hilarious ways. Right. It has to start like this, and then you're like, "This place is this place is a dump," and you're like, "I, you know, I, my grandpa always told me that this place made the best whiskey," mm. and you know what I mean. <clears throat> and then there's going to be somebody. There's going to be a. Uh, there's going to be a woman from the village. Ooh. There's going to be a woman from the village, um, but no, no. I, I was thinking about who's that dude who does all the the, the gay romances where people are getting Chuck fucked Eagle. by sharks and Chuck stuff. Eagle. Yeah, Chuck Kingle. Are you not familiar with Chuck? Ch Are you not familiar with Chork Tingle? His, Here, uh, the his, his novel. Uh, what was it? Uh, Camp Damascus apparently is amazing. Did you say like people get fucked by sharks? They, yeah. Well, wait, wait. They, they also fuck sharks. Of, so of, uh, of... this is where Baldur's Gate got its inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be crazy. <laughs> it wouldn't be crazy actually. If they had gotten, they were like, listen, people love it when these beasts yeah. are out here getting aft. Beast of banging? Yeah, exactly. If the beast is banging, don't bother hanging. I don't know. I don't know how it works. No. So, what's the sequel here? This is one of my, I love Red Breast. I've never even once heard of Red Breast. I'm not following the, oh, now, you got, now you got one. Thank you. Um, it's a 12-year-old Irish whiskey. 12-year-old Irish joke. <laughs> Dude, it's a classic. Yeah. It's a classic. But, it, but it, it has one of your favorite things on it. It's a bird. Oh, yeah. No, do you, out east, did you guys ever ask if someone wanted a Hertz donut? <laughs> You're, okay, okay, so you, you know instinctively to prepare your pugilist. I'm not going to do it. Oh, oh God. My, you fell for it. <laughs> we don't have that. Well, uh, we don't, you don't have the Cheerio? No. I don't know. I had no idea. Was, I noticed it late. I was like, oh, I wonder why he's doing that. And then a wicked strike to the liver. That's the same thing. Oh. So, like, if, if you can get somebody, like, if you're just sitting down and you're just like, and they look at it, <laughs> boom. This, the East Coast is a dangerous place. Yep. Now, uh, so let's get some moisture uh, here in the mix. So, so Red Breast is a, is a favorite of yours, and not just because of its, its no, but avian uh, avatar, I assume. Yeah. But you'll uh, get a whiff and... Really and you'll know right away? Yeah. Yeah, I would say... I don't know enough to say, but in my experience, Irish whiskey is just sort of brighter on the... It's brighter on the nose. It doesn't really feel the same to me. And then they do different... It seems like mm -hmm. the profiles are different, Absolutely. too. Like, it's... After the story that you told me about why scotch is more popular in the States than Irish whiskey. Like... Because it's better? Yeah, no. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm quite, it's I'm, quite good. Yeah, Irish it's, whiskey is great too. It's quite good, but it's, it's not the same. No, it's different. It's just a different <laughs> right? whiskey. Well, it, it must be a different tradition a too, and different inputs. We have a lot of great whiskeys, and they're all kind of pretty wonderful from all different places around the world. Yeah. It's a cool tradition. All right, here. The quick sniff is big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, they're just, they're warmer. They're, they're brighter up front. Different things happen after you put it in your mouth, obviously, because it's mm. poison, but. Okay, again, he can't do a toast, he can't do a cheers. What a, he just drinks it. What a flaming. Red breast. Red breast. Get a lead vest for that red breast. Pretty good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they're, at least in my, they're just, they're not, some of these, listen, 
I love it. I love the whole thing. I love everything that you're doing. Some of these Scotch whiskeys are doing too much. Yeah, they're great. They're doing too much. This is not doing too much. You know what I mean? It's not doing too much. Nothing to prove. No, no, it's just different. It's bright. All right, let's try this. So sweet. So nice. Clean finish. Red breast, baby. But it definitely seems like it has a, a little more chew, a little mm. more malt chew. It's full bodied. Well, you're right. Woof. All right. So let's see here. So we have done delicate and we've done full bodied. What can one expect from Powers? Now, Powers is, Powers is a lot more well known, it seems like, than these other two. Mm -hmm. Right? I feel like this is a little Powers bit more. Is a, yeah, Powers has done a lot of collaborations. Oh, McGregor's there we go. Oh, yeah. Whiskey. Oh. Well, and there's different, con my understanding is that but certainly in, in, in like mixology, there's, Powers has got a little bit better PR, I yeah. think. It's cheap and everywhere. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. This, this, <laughs> it's just the universal nature of it? All right, here, now, I am excited to try this. And I also appreciate that you left a little whiskey in each of these in case Jasmine materializes. Oh yeah, that's exactly why I did it. As though from the wood of the very walls. It's like sometimes you can get a Jasmine infestation in your home. Um, they get in the studs and um, you gotta call a professional service. Ghostbusters? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It, it, depends on, it depends on what she's trying to get up to in there. Thank you. Now we're talking. Now I'm gonna do the whole thing. Oh my gosh, there's the sickest fucking, it's a, it's a song that um, Hozier sing it also. Uh, have you ever, is there any way for us to play a video on this stream, Josh? Yeah, and, and not, you know. I mean, can anyone happen. hear it? Yeah, and get DCMA. Well, yeah, but we get, in, we get, it's not, you're not supposed to, Jerry. <laughs> well, it's pretty great. I mean, I could. Well, then you can tell people about it and they can watch it themselves. <clears throat> you should go and you should listen to Hosier's The Humors of Whiskey. Ah. But it's one of the most beautiful, it's one of the most beautiful things. And it's basically, it's basically a toast, mm -hmm. but it's in the form of almost like a drones, like a droning song. Oh my gosh. Anyway. Oh gosh, there's a, there's a bunch of other ones. You ready? Yeah, well, I can give you a funny toast. What do you got? Well, uh, you're gonna have to raise your glass. Oh yeah, of course. Fucking dead dick. Even. Oh, that's, that's, that's not right. Here, what do you got? Uh, here's to men of all classes who, through lasses and glasses, will make themselves asses. Yes! Sponsor. Oh, that's fucking baller. Dude, that's the shit. All right, here, I gotta, I gotta find this. Here we go, listen to this shit. We don't want, there's, the first part of it is not it. But there's really, really hot shit down here. Um, come guess me this riddle. What beats pipes and fiddle? What's hotter than mustard and wilder than cream? What best wets your whistle? What's clearer than crystal? What's sweeter than honey and stronger than steam? What will make the dumb talk? What will make the lame walk? The elixir of life and philosopher's stone? And what helped Mr. Brunnell to dig the Thames tunnel? Wasn't it, uh, wasn't it poteen from old Irish Owen? So it's, it's um, Inish Owen, hmm. right? Here, so get a look at this. So stick to the crater, uh, the best thing in nature for drowning your sorrows and raising your joys. Oh Lord, it's no wonder if lightning and thunder was made from the plunder of poteen me boys. So it's like a, a whiskey ode. Yeah. Oh fuck, it's too good, man. I'll give you another one. Um, it's too hot. So this is a more serious one. -ish. Hit it, hit it. Um, Dude, I knew that you had stacks of these. Okay. I felt very confident, yeah. just given what you've had to do over life, right? Yeah, so with my family, you know the tradition of my family in this country and the revolution, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But with my 
Scottish family, so. There's a fucking knife in there? This is called a skin do. You have a fucking knife in your shoe? Mm -hmm. But the fact that you can see it. Oh, that's part of it, right? The fact that you can see it means we're friends. Yes. I would normally hide it. Oh, it could be hid in the, in the pouch. Yep. Or anywhere, for that matter. Yeah. But a foe. What my family would do, they slam this on the ground when it was a serious. Oh. Ghost. So you know we're friends. Oh my gosh. And it's not hidden at all. Dude, that's really, that's really, really interesting. So my friend Pork and I, if we were in our cups and we were at the bar and we would often, like our thing was discussing specifically religion. And of course you can see where that might get sophisticated, right? But we had a process to indicate, much like slamming the weapon down, the process was to place your hand down on the table and then spread the hand like this, like you were laying out all the cards. Mm. So eventually we never even had to say, I'm putting all my cards on the table. If we were gonna talk about something real, we would put our hand on the table and then just move it to the right to indicate to the other person that they should buckle the fuck up, right? right? Dude, that's, this is kick ass. Yeah. I love this so much. But anyway, yeah, that's, I don't know how to do it better than this fucking so, poem. This is a Burns toast. As oh. in all ages past, freedom and whiskey gang it together. That's so nice. It's on to bar. No, you need, you, need the, you need this language. You actually have to have this language around to be a person, I think. So the, the power is, this is, would you, is this like a lesser? I wouldn't think so. I mean, it's, it's very, very well popular and known. Uh, it's a little bit more in your face, mm -hmm. but I, for it's me, it's spicy. peat. Like for me, like the actual peat nature, which is in all of these to one degree or another, mm -hmm. the actual peat is much more present in this. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe that's when they say spicy, maybe like part of that burn yeah. and that, that character is in there. I don't know, that's really, really good. Yes, Mammal Sounds, I, there was a place called the Whiskey Bar and I think that there still is, it still, moved, still it moved. But they had a book in there and there's a rate, just like when we make stuff here in the show, uh, there is indicators related to whiskey about its peat content. Mm. So just like SRM or IBU or whatever, like that's just something that's part of fine whiskey is this indication. And I would definitely, it's, it's like the guy that gets like the biggest double IPA. Like I know that it's wrong, but I was young. And so I was like seeking out the most extreme parts of it. And some of those are at the, at the top end, that peat nature, just you writhe with it. Like it's, it's serious stuff. But no, I think that this one is also quite good, but it's definitely in line with these other, it's in line with these other Irish whiskeys. It's really bright, sweet, and friendly. And it doesn't, it, it seems like it doesn't have the troubled upbringing as some of these scotches might have. Watch yourself. <laughs> you do have a knife. <laughs> All right here, I'm gonna try one more of this. Oh man, and now it's just too good. Three in, I'm gonna tell you right now, the third whiskey's great. Try that one. <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> I would say out of the three, that's the least mild, the most aggressive, and it probably has to do with peat. It just fills the mouth, and I don't mind this taste, but like a, like a hop enthusiast, you have to want that, that edge, you know, or like a sour enthusiast, like it's just some angle that's coming in. Now, is it correct to say, first of all, thank you for this second round mm. uh, of whiskeys. It was super, super fun. But unfortunately, it was supposed to be a dry January. You know what I mean? Amateur. Who? <laughs> Amateur. It didn't work. Um, it didn't take. Did you even think that we, we have four shows to do in January? <laughs> what part of dry was going to be part of that? It's mostly a joke. Now, uh, but we do also have Czech, oh, Czech Nomancer. Is, is it Czech Nomancer? Czech Nomancer or Czech Romancer? <clears throat> No, either fuck, one of them is actually is romance. Either one there? of them is actually good. I have check no. Oh, che check romancer. Oh, like necromancer. Yes. But either either way, it would actually work. Um, but do I do I have it on good authority that check romancer 
uh, like great. a tasty, it's, you know, it should it should be like a nice Czech black lager, right? Should be. Here, do you want me, you want me to handle this one? Oh, pour it. All right. All right, I have some classic glassware here. Now let's see what happens with the Czech Romancer as it emerges from. Should be much better. Well, at, oh yeah, perfect. And hopefully. Well, because this this will be so nice. It's in this style, because the actual material components of these beers are quite simple. The carbonation is a big part of the experience, right? It's getting a little hot right. in here. What's that? It's getting a little hot in here. I need to find an air duct. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get out. No. Oh. Oh yeah, you, you, there's no reason. You don't. You can pee right in here. You have full access. Oh no, my no, goodness. No, 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 no. Air duct. You yeah. just got a flat. I don't have to pee. Oh. I get air conditioning right up. Oh, man. Interesting. Can't bring him anywhere. Oh, did it go? No, no, no. It's here. You smell it. You don't got to. Well, remember, I was the one who thought it went bad. When it was, no, this is. Different. No, no, no. But 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 again, and that's actually happened a couple times. And the reason is because Belgian yeast. Is weird. Clues, you've been doing a lot more than listening. You built Here, the bar for smell. us. That's not bad. It's really, really good, mm. actually. Pilsner, Vienna malt, crystal, special roast. Oh my gosh. What a combo pack. And then ABV, it's like four and a half. That maybe, girl right? with honey, nice to see you. Oh, always great to see you. I stopped by the booth at Penzig this year. Oh, does she, she rolls through? Uh, I big just, honey? I, she knows, uh, she works with, I think, and knows some of the people at that there's a big honey booth. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, so this is the best. I mean, in terms of the, the nose on this, it's, this is just a perfectly nice, balanced Whoa. nose. Whoa! That's right? delicious. Oh my God. Could use a little more carbonation. It could use more carbonation. But I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm rolling it and putting it in high. <laughs> How long was it on carbonation? A week. It needs to be on two weeks. You just need to check it, uh, essentially, because this is these are good facts. The way that um, the the carbon or the CO2 level can go up and down, so you just gotta every time you're in just check and make sure it's at the right level. Okay. But you only want to have it at a high level for like a day or two. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. You, then you drop it down. Yeah, high, the high because level. Yeah, you overcarbonate it, and then it loses. It actually overcarbonating means it's coming out quicker, more carbonated, and that means the bubbles just escape, and there's no carbonation left okay. in the beer. Right. So powerful techniques. But here's what I will say: it purely, purely in terms of the body of this, like, Chad has absolutely done it again. Can we put the ingredients up, Josh? Do. Like, okay. Well, I mean, we tried here. This is what I'm saying. Like, I think there's a lot of different beers that you could fuck around with just on the basic metal of this recipe here. Mm -hmm. That is so good. I mean, for us to have this something. It reads tasty. What's that? You know, you read those ingredients and well, it just no, looks you, tasty. You want a piece. In fact, let me just bring you a little bit. It's really neat. Mm. I'll bring you some back into the. It's, it's real good. The studio here. Um. So, just incredibly smooth, but there is. Here's the thing, it's like there's no off note in it. No. Every every part of it. Just travels through. You know, in terms of the ABV, my guess is it's, it's under five. It's got to uh, be. The ABV was about five and a half. No, God, it's it's higher. That's even more dangerous. Holy fuck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I would say that certainly at this point, moving, you know, having done the show for years and years, to get another, like, base simple recipe. Are we becoming like the fucking master brewers at uh, every, literally every master brewer that we have met from an outfit? Eventually they get to the point where they just want lagers, <laughs> right? Like what actually excites them is like making something simple and basic and yeah. perfect and not and not going hog wild. Mm -hmm. Just making something that is is accessible, like relaxing to drink, just executed. Mm. Right? 
<clears throat> it could be because this particular combination of simple stuff in this ratio, there just isn't anything wrong with it. Like if eventually we have to get to the point where we're like, okay, are we making a beer that we can have forever? Like we're going to make our last beer <laughs> and you could sort of be happy with that for a while. Here, is there, is there, are you seeing something cool down there? Here, no, George, would it be possible to see the crucible? You are so demanding. Well, I just, I get very excited. It's, it's not interesting right now. Well, I, I would just like to see it just to know that I'm alive. Yeah, so basically, it's already hit it. It's now grabbed the, the liquid, the wart. Mash, mash one. <laughs> exactly, and now it's just beating the shit out of it with the pump. Because the, the Annis Wars continue in the chat, apparently. Isn't there going to be a dry edition of some of that for the uh, ginger beer? It wouldn't be a huge surprise. What? Cinnamon, I think. The... Which beer? The ginger all the way. I don't know. You're brewing it. But yeah, that's what I need to ask yes. you. <laughs> what the dry edition was. Well, oh, and... yeah, it was cinnamon sticks. <clears throat> cinnamon yeah, cinnamon yeah, 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 cinnamon sticks. sticks. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no crazy. Uh, or allspice, whatever you want. Oh, no, cinnamon sticks. Cinnamon Jeez. sticks? About how many do you think? Two. Two. Oh, yeah, it won't take much. Just the bark. Drop those in and boom. Yeah, they got crazy okay. surface okay. area. It'll be fine. Yes, here. Now, Voodoo Lou Kerensky, that's one of the more surprising things about simple hops is that there's all kinds of flavors in there, and depending on the yeast, um, they can emphasize different ones. Now, obviously, it's an ancient story, but regular old Tet has crazy spice and herbal character. And depending on what else is inside there, it can elevate those tastes. It's completely nuts. All right, now, uh, so poll.ma.pe is back. It feels good, it feels right. Um, and so it'll be very, very easy to do uh, all of these votes. But what are we gonna, what, what uh, theme are we We need do? the theme, exactly. So I'm already building a poll for a theme. What do we think is good? Now, had Jasmine been here, right? Uh, it's, I'm not, yeah. no shade to Jasmine, but I'm saying that. Oh no, it's your fault. At some point, when Jasmine materializes here in the, in the show. Making, I showed up to her stream Making last night. a beer. You did not. Oh, and I was there. No, you weren't. I was. No, you weren't. She told me, Jerry. she was like, Listen, Jerry ghosted my stream. I popped in a couple times. She was like, Eric, if you didn't come, I was going to ghost today. And uh, I said, well, I'm glad I'm here. Drama. And she's like, I would never ghost to you or Kiko. I'd ghost Jerry. She is a saucy lass. And uh, we had a good laugh. And we well, hopefully you were able to give her some tips. No, she said you gave her shitty tips. Um, Not true. And I, I believe that. Um, WTF? You and your fucking snake bite oil. We're all familiar. Yeah, clues. I didn't know it was like that. No, no, no. It, this is all, it was all unjust. Oh, no, of course, of course. Um, but no, this is the thing, because we've had her on the stream before doing painting. Yeah. She just gets stressed out. <laughs> she gets super stressed out, and painting mechs is the easiest, most fun. Oh, no, she crushed the mech I gave her. Crushed it. Yeah, I'm just saying that like, like she put time into it and it looks fucking amazing. It's sick. It looks like Hannah's mech. Nice, dude. I can't wait. I'm it, I'm cranked up. It's like, it looks it looks solid. It should get a Kiko handshake. Really, a firm. Yeah. Quick but firm. Yeah. All right. Now, <clears throat> yeah. Now a Hannah beer is not a terrible idea. Well, I still think we should do that. But with we have to do it with Jasmine, right? Yeah. All right. So. I mean, I'm liking that rogue trader. Ooh, no, that's interesting. Because rogue trader is essentially a, uh, you're flying around on a ship, but this ship is like, it's, it's not a like city. a spaceship that you know about. It's a city that flies around. Mm. Like all of your like vassals, it's like a, like a medieval liege lord, except their holdings are in a ship. Yeah. It's completely nuts. As a setting, it's, it's like a generational ship. It right? absolutely is. Well, and, and that's a huge part of it because you're you're still waiting on a on a tasty PC, right? So you can jump in here. Yeah, I got a million things to buy before that. 
But all of that stuff, all, all the stuff that you like in sci-fi, especially the generation ship, like that stuff comes up in the first couple hours. Mm-hmm. You're having to deal with, that. yeah. <clears throat> you're, you're having to deal with issues from multiple generations of people who have, like they have never left the ship. Mm. It's just, oh, it's so fucking good. So anyway, Road Trader, we can figure out something like that. Ironwood Brew, no, that's not terrible. Yeah, Ironwood, I like. And then if you're talking about Solaris 7, then you are talking about, and, and it comes up a lot, actually, in Black Remnant, just because <clears throat> Eric has brought us to a lot of feeder leagues Mm. We've never really seen the large scale yeah, Solaris games yet. The big games. And so it might be fun. Well, I'm really just going for that gladiator vibe, you know, like when he was like coming up. On the on the come up, right? No, but that's what it is. We want the arc. But the, it's also hooked into this merchandising. Like, like you can't go to the freak Kiko can't go to the fucking main of Robot and, Jocks. Like, yeah, in freaking no. round one. No, no, he has to earn it, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm looking forward to a, a battle with Kiko where it is like a one-on-one thing, but we do the multiple dice version of, oh, the, yeah, yeah, totally. of the damage. So the way to roll damage where essentially for each point of damage your weapon would do, you roll a separate hit roll. Mm-hmm. And so instead of doing the full seven damage, it makes it much more like a duel. It's going to be super fun. No, we got some, we got some good stuff out here for sure. We don't have, no, Clues, I love you, obviously. But man, I, I, I think I've seen Kiko drink once. At time. I've seen him drink once. We, exactly, this is There's what I mean. There's a reason for it, and I can't get a Well, no, 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 reason. he needs a big reason. Like, I do not need a reason. No, this was recent, too. Really? And I Must have been at a show? Yeah, it was at a show, and we were having dinner or something, and he ordered a something. And I'm like, what? Yeah. I, I think I saw him drink a margarita once. Have, no, I think it might have been Gen Con. Oh, okay, because I, did, I didn't see this one. Maybe, maybe it was <clears> at, no, maybe it was at East. I can't remember. I just remember being at dinner with him, and I, he ordered a drink, and I'm like... Yeah, he might drink... This is it. Like, I, I sang This is fucking it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, it was just like... There's this, this place he used to love down in, like, San Diego called Mario's. Mm. which is like this Mexican restaurant. And, it's, I mean, that's the only time I've ever seen him, like, full-on, like, just, like, have a drink. Was like at his favorite restaurant after a show, right? And that's probably a very wise way to handle it. All right. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Rogue Trader would be an amazing, like, Omen Drawn would be the perfect Rogue Trader character. There's no question. There's no question at all. You tabletop uh, Warhammer RPGs, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Different arrows. Yeah, he's already there. Uh, hey, so Rogue Trader is what we came up with, and so Rogue Trader is what we shall do. So let me bring up Tomboy Notes here on my powerful Linux laptop. Get the guardrails set up, so they're looking for generation ship, oh, okay. generation ship style. Okay. Forty k beverages. The hell does that mean? That's well, I mean, to me, I think, I, I think that's what's interesting about it. Like, I don't know what the, I don't know what the, um, the saison tastes like on this ship. Oh, that's a great. A saison is a perfect. But model. I think that they have one, <laughs> right? I think that they have. A farmhouse style who, ale. Who makes it? Is it upper decks or lower decks? Hell, no, it's like dog. It's got dog hair, literal dog hair, in it. The hair of the dog is not a euphemism, in this place. So I think uh, saison is a keeper. Easy peasy. Uh, French farmhouse style ale tends to be made with what's available. So narratively, it's perfect. Um, I mean, what else sounds good? I mean, because a lot of times. Because we'll mess around with concepts like this in Black Remnant, too, where it's like, hey, these are the grains we had. <laughs> we, we, we have to make beer, but we have to make it with the fermentables we have. Yeah, 
Yeah. It could be, yeah, it could be up or down. But again, like what it means for these different tiers, these different like social strata inside the ship, there's going to be different stuff. But I mean, for, for me, the, the thing that is really interesting is the peasant. This how yeah how do they? I think a straight pale ale. They're, of they're, course, they're just selling fuel. It's like exactly fuel, right. Uh, pale ale. Like submarine fuel. Again, pale ale is also, in terms of its like remit, quite broad yeah. about what it can accept. Yeah. Super broad, like in terms of the guardrails, they're wide. Um, now, is there a is there a kinky one that we can throw in there? And obviously, we're looking for we're looking for juice uh, from the chat as well. Maybe a fruit and spice beer. Tell me, so, that feels correct like to me. Something that like you pick up on the way as you're uh, going to different ports. You're putting what you're putting what you can in there, mm -hmm. right? Fruit and spice beer. Framboise. 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 It's a it's a Belgian, um, but Frambrisi. obvious. Uh, Frambrisi. E. Uh, it would be very good. I mean, I, that's one of my favorite styles, but I have a hard time imagining that the raw materials for it, the wild yeast portion, because it's a Belgian style, yeah. that's not crazy, but having enough fruit fermentables to fill the entire keg, that's, I feel like that's the reason why I wouldn't do that particular so one. The, uh... No, uh, it, it, that's going to be upper decks. Yeah, that's gonna be... And it's, it, it's not going to be brewed on ship. No, that's going to be picked up somewhere else. It's going it, to, you're going to get that in port, right? Yeah, pure analog. Listen, I, I can't, I can't stress enough. I love what you're saying, but I don't want Brett anywhere near my studio. Um, but, but here's, here's why I'll say that I love what you put out. Because if we're talking about brown ale, which of course we love anyway, and it's aged with oak, right? What happens is over time, that barrel would become, in Belgian brewing terms, a footer. Eventually, there's enough of the yeast, uh, these, these um, compounds, in the wood of the staves themselves to ferment whatever the fuck you put in it. That's, that's the reality. At New Belgium, this is true. Their footers are taller than people, and you don't add anything to it. It just turns wort into beer. That's how much is just present inside the staves. It's insane. No, they want the, they want this fruit and spice kinky shit. So can you can you read me the full description of that? Just because I'm not, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of information in the name, but uh, yeah, yeah, a harmonious marriage of fruit, spice, and beer. All right, well, I mean. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So once, have you ever heard of an elk hound? No. It's trail mix beer. Yeah, I had never heard of Elk Hound, an Elk Hound. I didn't know what it was. Big and no, who knows? And so my young, my youngest, who is you know now my eldest, uh, Samantha, also the Silk. They were like, Dad, what's a, what's an Elk Hound? And I was like, Well, let's look it up online. You know what the definition is for Elk Hound? No, a Norwegian Elk Hound. <laughs> That's unhelpful. We laughed our asses off. That's the least helpful definition of all time. Oh, it's a Norwegian elk hound. Thank God. That cuts it down. No, fruit and spice beer, to my mind, from a narrative story perspective, unbeatable. Isn't that hound for hunting elves? It's, it's, a it's big, Norwegian. That's it's a big dog. There's also a Norwegian it's forest cats. Right here. So what do you got, man? What do you mean? I mean, what's next? Oh, ABV. Anywhere from 2 to 10%. All right. Okay. Two to ten? Oh yeah, yeah, but again, it's a pragmatic beverage, right? At two, at the you know at the two percent level, online. this is just a Sensors safe online. thing to drink. Weapon online. All systems. Now look at that. That is, that is a dark wart. Imagine it. It's going crazy. The only thing I don't like about the Z is that we don't get the Wartex. Those were great times. Good times. How about they all? were great times. All right, here. So we've got to build the scaffold oh, here, I guess. What beer already? Gee, what right. beer? Did something happen? Maybe Jasmine is here. 
I know that she's got a dark thirst. Now, all right, ABV. Now, here's our range, you perverts. Now, remember, we're making a beer, obviously. And also, Eric drank my beer, which is sick. It's twisted behavior. Fucking lies. And it has to stop. Those were lies when you first wrote them. <laughs> Ain't that movie. So do you want a romance about you being a Scottish brewer? Yeah, and then I will That'd pose for the cover. That would be great. It's too funny not to do. Like... It'll be the new Outlander. It's too funny not to do. Sorry. Oh my gosh, here. Ghost, you have to get a shot of this beast. Look at this. This, this is the very picture of health. Look at this monster. I mean that, I'm drawn in. I'm drawn into that. Ooh. Oh, yeah, it's real good. God damn it. Yeah, EJB Scottish fanfic. No, I'm, I'm just saying that now that I am dialed in, I have like daily word targets for the book and I'm fucking murdering it. Not that there's nothing else I want to do but write these fucking novels. Like, it would not be hard at all. And also, people buy the fuck out of romance. It would be stupid not to do it. I mean, one of the two books is a gay romance book, right? I mean, that's, that's like already in there. I feel confident that that's gonna do well. The end. We used to do the, the fan binding of those. Yeah, all right. Great. No, no. They have chosen six, which I think is appropriate. Okay. I think that's appropriate. Color. Uh, we'll be able to do something good with that. The color is between two and 50. Okay, so, okay, so, fr so, so fruit and spice ales are... So it's the world's your oyster. It's, the parentheses in this are quite Ag wide. Yeah. No. 20 to 50? Two. What the fuck? God, this is, fruit and spice is the perfect choice for the rogue trader. No, 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 but it isn't so much that it doesn't matter, it's that anything is, anything is possible, right? Here, so just like before on the ABV, we're gonna start at two. But it's, God, it's got oil in it or something? What, what the fuck is with the 50? That's beyond the fucking scale. But that, but we do like that, right? Yeah. We think that that's cool. Adorn, welcome back. Oh, I'm so glad. Welcome aboard. Uh, we have already we did, we did our Scotch tasting. You might want to watch the stream from the beginning later. But we did a very very fun Irish, not Scotch. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I don't want to mislead the anybody. Fuck is talp when I need him. Jesus. It's Irish whiskey. I I apologize. It's very, very good. But then, uh, Czech Romancer, uh, this, uh, you know, essentially Black Pilsner is very, very good. Well, Synaptic Fire, there's a million, this is the thing, every time you did this recipe, it would be different, right? So, we're gonna start at two. We're gonna come in at 25. Mm. What if we made it two, and then there was a dropper addition we could add to make it as dark as you wanted? Well, I mean, I love the idea that it's well, just we got... We haven't talked about the fruit yet. That we're Yeah. Because that's also going to affect that color, right? Three. Three. Oh, that's right, Pyro. I am incredibly sorry. Hmm. Pyro, too, is a young Scottish lad. Facts. Yeah, I didn't have a many chances to hang around with Pyrrhal this time. I got a, I got a, had a long chat with him. 
I, I had a couple again. small ones, but I, I did not have the deep one that I had before, and that bums me out. It's All becoming right. a busy, busy, busy show. Yeah, it is. It kind of is. I mean, I'm in there at the, the Cirque. I think that's what they call it. And ba basically, that's like the Sheraton for that show, or the, like the East one. Like, there's just like the spot. But it was good. Mm. I mean, it, it worked. I talked to a lot of people, but holy shit, it was like shoulder to shoulder. I reminded properly, but shall you next year? <laughs> I love it. I am down to clown. Yeah, and Synaptic Fire. Um, yeah, I had a chance just like in passing to see some of the uh, some of the fits, as my daughters would say, uh, for East, and they are very, very strong. Um, they're quite strong for 24, which is, of course, if you can believe it, the 20th anniversary of the show. That is hard to imagine, but, you know, not, not the majority of my life, but just about half of my life has been spent doing these weird shows. Uh, 25, so right here in the middle for the SRM. I thought they would be going for something like industrial lubricants had fallen inside the fermenter mm. or something. I thought they'd be trying to tell some kind of weird story. Now, IBU. Five to 50. Oh man, so all the way up to like some IPA type tangy. Mm -hmm. Five. So what are they doing in this ship? Yes, and what are they doing it with, right? Now we'll figure out how we get to these flavors, right? That's gonna be next. But for now, let's just get the guide rails in place um, and then we'll go hog wild. Yeah, I mean, my understanding, I talked to Lydia about it. Lydia is currently working with Mike on the sticker project. Jesus Christ. And that's how you know uh, but also, like, I that's, love the stickers. I that's love, how I love you know getting, it's like, going to be kick ass. When, when there's text messages that I get, like we in our group chat with from Mike sending stickers, I'm like, it's no one, fucking cool. No one has ever done anything like that with that art. Like it just doesn't exist. The cute tyranids, that the Ripper swarms awesome. hanging around with so a termagant, cool. it's not a thing, right? It's so cool and fun. Uh, but anyway, so she's she's hooked in, like. Now that she is there, and it's just a matter of Mike delivering products and process, it's game over. Like, that's actually going to be executed at the very, very highest level, and I'm completely confident in it. Yeah, totally. Here, here, no, no. Demetrios, tell me what you mean. I, I don't even hate this. And here in Washington, it wouldn't be impossible for us to get cryo hops. But what makes you think that a cryo hop is a thematic mix? Right? Uh, 25 is what they're going for. Uh, again, I'm not even mad. I just, I, because I know what that process is, and I'm just trying to figure, I'm trying to imagine these literal cyber peasants creating it, right? Frozen stuff. Okay, now that's interesting. So the oh, I see the hops that they would have would be desiccated powders. <laughs> okay, okay. Now that banks. <laughs> I that makes sense to me. So twenty five. Uh, twenty five IBU is where we. Okay. Settled out there. I think the first thing we have to do is figure out what fruit we're going to put in this thing. Yes. All right. So let's think about. Uh, you know, we're moving from place to place. A lot of time, they're, they're in the Empyrean. Like, they're literally, like, in hyperspace. Like, they might have the occasional fruit that they have access to. They might have a little tree that has a little stuff. They've gathered enough soil. 
and, and enough waste products. I imagine there'd be a lot of citrus stuff. Don't scurvy. No, very small. You know, you know, this is actually quite strong. I would say something like a tiny yuzu tree or maybe like a kumquat, something that's very small and doesn't, it doesn't require a lot. Or whatever, yeah, hydroponic is the is, highest it, production per plant. Yeah. What's that? What is most whatever efficient. has the highest production. Yeah. Per what's plant. the most pragmatic, right? I imagine something that gives them vitamin C. No, no, Pirro, I don't disagree with you. But what we're talking about is, I think, in the based on the info we have so far, it's based on the lower levels of the ship, right? So they don't have access to absolutely everything. Nikman, it's because you spent a lot of time on this stream. <laughs> Dried, oh, dried mango. Now that's very interesting. First of all, it's incredibly easy to get. It's essentially a desiccant, right? It's, it's been laid out, it's been dried, maybe over some kind of vent. Dried fruits, oh, dried apricot. Now you're fucking talking. Mobius, that is sick. No, I hate dried apricots. I'm on record. Really? I can't stand them. Oh my God, no. Hmm. This is like Brenna's thing. She will buy dried apricots because she knows no one else in this house will endure them. But I think that dried apricot in an ale is actually an amazing. What do you think about magic hat number nine? I feel like that's a weird question. Yeah, that, that seems like a Have you never question. had that beer? No. Holy shit. Is it a hat? It's like 20 years ago, it's the beer that, one of the beers that put craft beer on the map. Oh, basically it like started the micro. Yeah. Wow. What, what, what's the hook? It was dried apricots. Dude, I'm here to tell you right now, I think this kicks ass. So let's say dried apricot. I, I gotta be honest with you. The practicality of using dried fruits in this, there's a bunch of reasons why I like it, but theme yeah, is uh, mwah. Well, if you can, you're also going to be hyper pragmatic about storing. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. See, Nickman's like, I almost forgot about Magic Hat number nine. What was the brewery? Magic Hat. Oh, that's them. Yeah. Honestly, even a, pr a prune. God, you know what though? I don't like prunes. My step grandfather would eat them every morning. This is what I mean. That's that's my thing. It's, it's like, like prama. Juice too. Yeah. Oh, this is what I mean. But that. It's like it's great for your bowels. I'm no, like, no, I no, don't no, no. fucking care. But but here's the thing. I think that it's actually story appropriate. I I don't want it, but I think that a dried prune is actually strong. Now a dried fig is the other one. You should put peaches in there as. Uh, the live fruit option. Yep. Because I got four in here. They're fast and they Worf sell did love some bright, uh, uh, some Do they? Juice. Are, are they fast? Oh, yeah. they're unlike other. They're unlike other fruiting trees, aren't they? Sure. Don't know, uh, but if they can self pollinate, that's super useful for a ship. Uh, there's just. Something. I apologize, Demetrios, but you know what I mean, right? What? Figs can, figs can self-ferment? What? Kerensky? Well, I mean, it makes sense, right? The, because their, their life cycle is so bizarre. It requires a wasp. Like a wasp has to go in there and die. Like that's how it works. That would be, it's oh my God. Yeah, what, what's funny about that is it makes you think about it on the ship. It's like, do you have to tolerate wasps? <laughs> do you have to have wasps as well? Oh, there's one area where it's like, we gotta have bees because the captain wants some goddamn honey. It's like, Ugh. Yeah, there's gonna be some layer of this that has a lot of yeah. biological activity that's actually killer. Oh, clues, you just can't picture it. You just can't picture chewing on a, uh, a, a fig that has a dead wasp somewhere in it. I do not like a wasp. I got into a huge argument with my eldest daughter yesterday. 
They're like, they're basically the same as bees. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Wasps are assholes. Bees are low. They're vile. Bees ball. Yeah, bees are awesome. Bees All right. suck. All Dried apricot is what it is. Now, Get and, out of here. and my thing is, hey, we grab these, we chop them up, give them good surface area. They're in the, you know, the sachet. They go in there. They're completely separate. I love this. This is going to be amazing. All right, here. So we have our fruit. Mm -hmm. What's next? Uh, base malt. We're either going to go two row or six row. Two row is dry, clean, and crisp. Six row is going to be grainier. Grainy? Oh, like grains? Not yeah. Like, uh, Mouthfeel? Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. It, it, what, we, what we might describe as wheat structure. Like, you can just mouthfeel wise Garland tell. Structure. Not wheat. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, not wheat. No. But I, this should be established. Putting six row in this because it's quite hearty and it's also hyper productive. So imagine that two row, when they say two row, they mean the actual grains are up both sides of the stock, right? A six row, imagine that mathematically sort of rendered where here's the two seeds and then here's more and then here's more and then here's more. So imagine the entire top part of the stock covered in seeds. And that seems quite practical. It doesn't taste as good. This is why, right? But that doesn't mean that it's not appropriate for the grimdark future. I think I just saw the lights behind you flash. That's a good sign. Hmm? All right. Now take a look at that. I feel like that's a very, very savvy couple of choices there. Oh, Demetrius, are you are you think are you thinking Eric for the choice? It's quite it's quite strong, right? No, he's thanking me for correcting you. Oh. <laughs> Demetrius corrects me all the time. Now it's just a game. It's just something I enjoy. Yeah, synaptic fire, something that has a bit body. Yeah. Six row is definitely gonna hook you up there. And it's again like it's it's pragmatic in a very grim dark way in that yeah it's sweet and it has you know strong it's a very very solid fermentable but yeah it passes along a kind of a, like an almost aggressive um, wheat flavor which I mean to me feels like 40k I think everything is boiled down to the darkest exponent. Demetrius, yes. Now, the video game of Rogue Trader, at any rate, is essentially like a sophisticated XCOM-type game. The whole environment is grid-based, so it's, it's very different from... I think people are like, oh, it, that's, the, that's the 40K Baldur's Gate. And that's, not, that's not true. They're very, very different. And whatever, whatever Baldur's Gate might offer you in terms of like dark character options, it's not in the same universe as what Rogue Trader offers. It just isn't. Aggressive wheat is what celiacs call bread. Oh my gosh, dude! I have I have met, I have met celiacs. Our next door neighbor is mega celiac and they have to be on the they feel like weed is out to get them they're like what kind of soy sauce do you have and i'm like kiko man and they're like mm -mm. does it have a green top and i'm like no it's just the red top like in the restaurant they're like no wheat and i'm like but it's made from soy and they're like wheat they're always worried about wheat striking from the shadows like... no mm -hmm. uh, listen they want the sixth row they want the hearty wheat and we're going to give it to him by God. This so, is, is going to sustain a person. Um, what other flavors do we want in this beer? Exactly. No, I mean, that's no, no. my I mean, question. That's what I want. I mean, we, we have instigated them, and now they're going to deliver us incredible you've got, results. You've got a multi-grainy, 
uh, apricot taste. Yes. Are there any other flavors you really want in this beer? Yeah. White Where, chocolate. White chocolate? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pervert. I know. Molasses, interesting. Cranberry. No, 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 no. Grain wise, people. Yeah, no, here, here. We've got our fruit, <laughs> man. Yeah. Here, so what do you think in grain wise? Jesus. These beasts. I mean, well, I mean, there's chocolatey, there's roasty, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. caramel, there is bready, there is biscuity. Well, here, why don't we give them taste profiles, mm -hmm. and then you can choose a grain that is the right choice, mm -hmm. right? So let's say biscuity, which is like a sweet wheat biscuit. Yep. Like a teething biscuit. Yep. Then right? there's toasty. Then there is caramel. Then there is chocolate. And there is roasted coffee. Exactly. So let's give them let's give them the taste notes, and then you can grab the grain that you think is going to be the right choice. Mm -hmm. Which is to say, special B. Special B. Hey, now, are we playing 40K on Thursday? Fuck yeah, I'm gonna. Fuck are you ready? You. Yeah, because I, I got your text last week. But Keek still had all of his shit here. Like the whole studio was set up for the Tuesday game. Yeah, yeah, but you're but, but you're ready for a big. You want a big point game. You want two K points. Yeah, I don't want this thousand point crap. Can do. Can do. Only question for me is, do I use an assimilation swarm or the invasion fleet? Well, it's nice that you have that choice. I don't. Have yeah, you don't even have a book. <laughs> you don't even have a book. I just get to sit here with my. You with need my a book aegis, with, you, with your dick aegis, in your hand. Aegis of the Emperor, and that's fucking it. Protecting you Which from mortals, I don't deal. Dick shit that, against you. So, you know. Either way, yeah. I mean, I deal I just no sit mortals. sit here and get my. By bugs. Yeah, by. You get fucked by bugs. I get fucked by bugs. In space. Um, well, you're describing a scenario that, at least for me, is incredible. I'm happy I can help your ego. I want to be part of that. Yep. Okay, now. So we're moving into biscuity. We got toasty. Okay. They're moving around. I mean, jump right in here. Let me know. Oh, crimson. Custodies for. I love it. They're like, what faction? And then they hear what you say and they're like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Custodies for sure. I wiped the floor with the sisters <clears throat> against Lane on Saturday. I can't even imagine. That's vile. Like, that's, that's a horrible matchup. Killed one of my units. Or what? It's not a unit. Oh, one, no, model? One model. Ah! It was, it was sisters versus what? Custodes. Oh, uh, nice. Problem is, he, he in Lane's defense, he was just learning. This was like his first real game. Oh, and, but no. I mean, and eventually, like, this is the thing about Lane is that he he will actually, like, oh, he'll con continue nibbling at it his, until the, he is the next game really play, good. He's going to destroy me. Because there's one unit in Sisters that is frightening as all hell. Which one? I don't know what they're called. They're, they look like ghouls with chain swords. And oh, you, yeah, evis the, oh, with the yeah. eviscerators. Yeah, you get 80, 80 yeah, hits. Penitence. Yeah, the, the... Penitent engines? Is it Penitent engine or it's the uh, re, uh, re... Whatever. No, you I get, know what you, you mean. You get 80, 80 attacks. And then if they die, you get another... You can... You get resources. No, no. You spend a point and they attack again. <laughs> All right, now... I would just take three of those units and that's it. Bye-bye. <laughs> now... So, I think that it's okay. We're just gonna say that we're gonna put, especially since our SRM is a little bit north, we, we need a biscuity note and we need a toasty note. We need a new priest and a old priest. <laughs> Toasted biscuits. Huh? Now hold on. I heard there was a problem with this. I need to make sure that, that beer is still coming out of this device. Okay, no, it's fine. What's Ghost is fine. I, on that? I had gotten. What's that? I mean, what's the. Uh, what's. How alcoholic is that? Which? This here? That you're drinking, yeah. Uh, it has some alcohol. I mean, I don't. And then you had whiskey also. It's beer. I mean, I. Is this guy going to meet his mom today? I think he needs to have a little drink. What was the ABV? Uh, let, me, let me check Tomboy Notes. 
Uh, the ABV we have is six. Okay. All right. What hop flavors are we interested All in? All right. Now, Horp. No, obviously, when we're, when we're looking at this, let's... We're biscuity and fruity in this. So we could go for a stone fruit hop. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. We could go I mean, for a citrusy hop. I, I think that we're pretty, like, cleanly inside the baked good tart concept. Citrus in there for some contrast. What cit, something something on the citrus vein? It's apricot. Well, is what it would what it would because apricot is a very um, very mineral, very earthy fruit. If you take citrus, if you put a citrus hop in and take it a little bit north in terms of the tang, I think that it's actually going to expose things about the apricot that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Synaptic fire. We're on the same page here. So, but what we need is what do we want broadly as tones? Um, I think that something in the citrus vein is good in addition to um, Eric's suggestion. Yes, yeah, spicy. So spicy would be something in the noble hop vein, I think. Okay, so citra is gonna be one of them. Yeah, citra is super, super bright citrus. Um, and we'll go with uh, Mount Rainier. This is citrusy and spicy. Ooh. I love that. And if you're local um, and you're curious about Citra, uh, get a hold of Hellbent's Dang. It's in six packs typically at Dang. corner stores. It's real, real strong. And then we'll go, fuck. With Warrior, which Ooh. is citrus, herbally, and uh, grassy. And it's a good contrast. Mega great. Interesting. There we go. Well, and a couple a couple cool new ones there. We haven't done too much Rainier or Warrior. We did some Warrior, but I think right in this it would be really nice. Hey, so Feisty Crabman is saying they're doing a double dry hop citra. Ooh. What's the style, though? I'd love to know more. I would think a double IPA. What's that? Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, right? Um, now, Synaptic, almost an orange marmalade note. Hell yeah. If anybody is trying to fuck around with orange marmalade, in the future, uh, I would say the go-to hop, what would you say? Belma. Now, we used that on signing bonus, and it was very good. Like, sweet, jammy, juicy, hop character in an IPA, it's just unbeatable shit. Pale ale, really? Double dry hopped. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of uh, Jolly Roger. Oh yeah. This is maritime shit for sure. They like to take a base style and they're like, what if we just fucking went crazy? We haven't been there in a minute. I think the Jollies are good. Can you commit to Jollies this weekend? Mm -hmm. Then let's do it. Oh, Synaptic Fire. Signing bonus was so good. We, st we, have, a we have some cans filled with water mm -hmm. with the official label my, on them. My dad actually still has a signing bonus in his oh, fridge. God, I wonder what's happened to it by mm. now. He won't open it because he's so proud of it. Well, it's pretty fucking like... And the first Voodoo Ranger one we did. Well, yeah, I mean, Gab and Dave, like that's with the skeleton hand and the gold coins around oof great label just murder hey so they want a little citrus and spice i think citrus and spice is very curatorial chat i think that that's going to provide something really really nice because the rest of it is fruit um strong wheat we're, we're making a baked good that you can drink. What was the IBU? The IBU, shockingly, is 25. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be so good. All right. Now, we need a little yeast. I think we're gonna go with American Ale and American Ale too, because this would be, these would be simple yeast to find. Yes. So, American Ale is smooth, clean, and well-balanced. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to have the full text field. Ugh. 
And how about two? Uh, it's clean, tart, nutty, and fruity. Well, I mean, one hesitates to thumb the scale. Man, uh, cheesy. It, it must be said, I think that we have put together something really interesting that feels quite appropriate for what might happen in the bowels of a ship. This is going to be really, really great. Pure analog, what is beer maverick forward slash hops forward slash hop comparison tool? I guess we'll have to investigate. I mean, from a guess, I'm betting it compares hops. But... Wow. I'm going to do a chop Smart on you. Smart fucking call, man. No, here, but, look, but check out Robert Gibson. I have been influenced by you influencers. I stopped at my local beverage establishment while I'm driving. Ha! And listening to your show to pick up a cherry pie craft cider. Yeah. I mean, it's a, that's, that's something that ciders can execute very, very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, pure analog, obviously we appreciate the, uh, the techniques, the tools. Now, they want American Ale too. Now, you wicked beasts, I want you to imagine a scenario, if possible, uh, where we name it, and the hook is that this is the sort of beverage that brings you back. That brings you back. Um, God, that's a, that's a great track. Um, but this is the sort of beverage that is manufactured sort of as a daily practice, a mode of life in the very guts of a ship by people who think that this ship is the entire world. This is the sci-fi concept. All right. Soylent grains. <laughs> you dork. Look, you think that's not being used? <laughs> Grog Trader. Wouldn't it be Grog? Homeport makes me yearn for it, Clues. Mm-hmm. Bro Trader has got a certain delicious energy. Oh, oh wow. wow. That's funny. Grinley. Wait, what? Oh. I thought poor Katie was good too. Yeah, yeah. It's in the same Katie's Tears is the other. That's really, oh my gosh. That I believe that completely. That there would be something like that. But the funny thing is, is that Katie's Tears would be. It would never taste the same. Like anywhere you had it, it's just a it's just a name, right? Black Demon returns Prometheum. That is quite smart. That's actually really, really good. Here, now, port of call. I get the joke. Mm -hmm. oh. And so, I'm gonna put it in there. I like the joke. Geller Brew, EMW, we don't want that. Yuck. That's a, we don't wanna drink that brew. No. Apricot, you nerds. All right, now I'm looking for one more special name. A fruit, no pain, you nerd. <laughs> God damn it, De dead pixel cult. That doesn't make any sense. Make any sense. It, it's kind of good, though. Yeah. Fuck these things. Well, sure, but... 
yeah. not for this beer. It's just kind of a good yes, beer yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. So Crimson Kerr and I absolutely Amasek is like brandy, basically. It's hard wine. Um, there is a a bar, I think it's in Foothold, called Adeptus Amasicus, which is basically like the best drinkers. <laughs> It's pretty sick. Where is this? It's oh, in it's oh. in Rogue Trader. In Rogue Trader? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, dude, this game is just the most Eric shit there is. Well, they should. I mean, like hard cider, right? Memo sounds. Oh. Trade wine. Oh no. It messed up in the cloud and it screwed up all my names. All right. Oh, Ugh. All right, I'm going to put some stuff in here. Drunk. You shut up. Trade wine. We love it. All right, so put in your cool names again because <laughs> poll.ma.pe. J.E.R.R.Y. Yeah, dot me. Uh, did you have Pormethium? Oh, yeah. That's an easy one. Okay. What about Poor Cadia or Cadia's Tears? Cadia's Tears is an easy one. Or Port of Call. And you had Brogue Trader and Grogue Trader. Ooh, Brogue Trader is a good one. Right? And a Home Port, perhaps? Yes. Algae Ale. Uh, Soylent Grains. I know you hit those ones up. Thank you. All right. Here we go. A reasonable list. Yeah, port of, port of Call is good, but it did not make this cut. But it's not good enough. <laughs> did you spell, or is that a weird Y? Which one? Soylent. You know, that, that's, that's how it's spelled. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm saying, is that a Y? Because it yeah. doesn't look like a Y. <laughs> oh, maybe uh, back here. I think it's just squished. It should be. It's, it's super squished. squished. Oh, inside the yeah the UX there. Looks like a W. Well, here now, so such, Dave. If you change your vote, it'll actually just grab it for you. It's okay. You can't you can't get in trouble. Yet. Yet. I mean, I can see it. Well, yeah. Obviously, Josh will judge you. No. Yeah, but but would that be the first time? I'm taking it out of your channel points. All right. It's Pormethium. I mean, it makes sense. How the fuck do you spell that? Jesus. Oh, I, I, I got it for you right here. P O U R. P O U R M E T H I U N. Jesus. Cannot lose. All right, now. It's, it's quite strong, Crimson. I mean, ultimately, that's the juice. Now, uh, so I know that you are looking here at this place, this medieval pub that we have operated this program, and you're thinking, certainly that must be its only configuration. Well, that's where you're wrong. Here in moments, this will be transformed into a realm of battle, and we will be playing a game that combines live role-playing, and wargaming, and poor business decisions um, in a single coherent game called Black Remnant. It's the brainchild of Eric Benson. Eric Benson wanted our friend Kiko to have fun, and he turned his mind to that task. Uh, and he was correct. Uh, Kiko was able to make a character, a Shujo... Uh, anime, you know, mech pilot. Um, but the rest of the game, I can assure you, takes place in uh, the Inner Sphere. Um, and our show specifically takes advantage of the Calypso. Uh, a very small ship, a very small mercenary organization trying to make its way. Now, uh, I was recently able to learn that my mother was not dead, but alive. 
And we have Jasmine Bueller, that bronze girl, uh, here at 2.30 um, to play my mother and potentially learn about this period where I thought that she was in fact dead and was not. And um, we're going to get into some family stuff. And so it's good that I'm drunk because I feel like that's <laughs> sort of the appropriate context to really uh, truly engage into family content. Now, yes, exactly, Mobius. <laughs> so you're her dad and she's your mom. The PA verse stuff is getting weird. Well, algorithmically, we learned that there's, cer there's, there's certain contexts in which this content is appreciated. A lot of this stuff has been uploaded to websites and we're ready to continue it. So um, come back, uh, please, at 2.30. Uh, I'm gonna very, very, very quickly seize the machine of the universe, put it over there. But at 2.30, me, Kiko, Eric, Jasmine, Wargaming, live role-playing, Battletech, Black Remnant, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty good shit. It's going to be good stuff. Now, um, until then, of course, let me seize it. Huh.